Hi, I'm Rohit, and this is Mind on a Leash. Most of your thoughts, assumptions, beliefs, and stories that your mind makes up will not stand up to scrutiny. So what to do? Believe nothing your mind tells you. <laughs> really? I mean, at least as far as all the assumptions and thoughts and beliefs and so on. You may have to believe some of the practical things of how to get from point A to point B. Two plus two is four. That's practical stuff. But beyond that, stop treating your mind like a god or a scripture, something that you believe blindly. There are so many people who call themselves atheists, but in fact, they worship and believe their mind. Let's say your mind thinks this person doesn't like me. Or let's say your mind thinks that this person is really mad at me. You want to ask yourself a simple question. Is this interpretation based on fact or fiction? What is fiction? Fiction is based on limited data, subjective perspective, on assumptions, opinions, hearsay, or speculation. Fiction is circumstantial evidence. Yes, it's possible this person doesn't like you. Maybe because they made a face, or maybe because they were kind of like looking the other way or didn't pay attention to you. It's possible. But what's a fact on the other hand? A fact is something that is indisputable. There is concrete evidence. It must be proven beyond a shadow of doubt. Then we call it a fact. A fact needs to be based on research, evidence, and tangible proof. So does that mean I have to go to the lab? Does it mean I have to conduct some chemical experiment? No, it's much simpler than that. If I want to know whether this person is mad at me or doesn't like me, I just simply need to ask them. And if they say, oh, I, I, I'm really mad at you. I really hate what you just did. I don't like you. I don't want to ever be your friend. Well, now I know. But till that point, I don't really know. I may have some indicators, some possibilities, but unless I go out and investigate and hear it from the horse's mouth, I will never really know for a fact. That brings us to perhaps the most important point in here, and that is to challenge everything that your mind tells you. Ask yourself, is this 100% true? Is what I'm thinking 100% true? Can I be absolutely sure? Is there indisputable evidence? If not, then case dismissed. Constantly challenge all your mind's assumptions. Challenge all its conclusions. Challenge all its beliefs. Challenge it constantly till it gives up and backs down. Think of your mind as the accuser, the prosecutor in a legal situation and become the defense attorney that is going to stand up to that mind. And you need to be a good defense attorney because the mind's going to come up with all kinds of false evidence, all kinds of half-baked truths. The mind is going to come up with all kinds of speculation, which is referred to in courts as circumstantial evidence and which is not considered valid. The mind plays dirty. It uses limited data, irrationality, and twist reality. But you can use its pathetic strategies against it. You can make up a different story. You can create a wild fantasy that feels good. The mind says, this person doesn't like you because they looked at you kind of strange. Well, you could make up another story. You can add a, a different twist to the whole tale. Well, this person doesn't like me because maybe they have a bad stomach today, or maybe because they're having a problem with their spouse, or maybe because they were in a traffic jam, or maybe because there's a million different reasons why that person could have behaved that way or looked that way. You'll never know until you really ask them. A technique you might use is to draw one column in which you write down the mind's criticism, put that on one side in one column, and in the second column, write down concrete evidence or proof. And usually you'll find that the evidence your mind is giving you is kind of shaky. Then write down in the third column, counter arguments. In this way, you can practice being your own defense attorney and really taking on your mind, challenging everything it tells you. Often it's helpful to put it down on paper because when things are in our head, it's kind of all jumbled up. But when you put it down on paper, you can really sort things out. It's a lot easier a lot more effective, and it takes way less time. 
Another tool the mind often uses to attack us is doubt, especially self-doubt. That can be absolutely dangerous and really toxic and poisonous to our psyche. So what do you do with doubt? How do you handle the mind when it gets into that self-doubting mode or doubting another person for that matter? I would say instead of doubting yourself or doubting the other person, and, and you know, it's perfectly okay to consider the doubt, but before you start blindly believing the doubts your mind is having, the best defense is offense. Make the doubter doubt itself. Flip the thought around. Create reasonable doubt. Fight fire with fire. Do unto the inner bully as it does unto you. Now let's get down to some homework. In the next few days, stop the negative chatter by assertively commanding your mind. Challenge everything it tells you. Demand evidence and proof. Watch it. Be on top of it. Always. See you in the next one. Da, ba, da, ba, da.